I have been posting daily blender tips and tricks on my Instagram account for more than 700 days now. In this video I want to share a selection of my favorite 50 tips. You can find a list with all of them in the video description. Let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is an easy way to create steps out of this default cube. For this enter edit mode and switch to edge select. Then select this top edge and use the shortcut Ctrl B to add a bevel. Then increase the segments in those settings and change the profile type to custom. Here you should find the steps preset. And if you then want to adjust the number of steps, you can simply change the segments and reload the preset. To get it even better, you can then in object mode scale this along the y-axis. The second tip is about how to make the camera follow an object. For this add a track to constraint and select the object you want to follow as the target. Now I can move the cube around and the camera will always point at it. The same thing also works with light objects. Blender already comes with a lot of shortcuts, but did you know that you can add your own to them? For this simply select an option, right click on it and choose assign shortcut. Now you can press any key that you would like to assign to this action. In my case this is F7. The keys F5 to F8 are deliberately kept free in the Blender key map, so you can create your own shortcuts for them. If for any reason you want to play back the timeline in reverse, you can simply use the shortcut Ctrl Shift Spacebar. In the viewport shading menu, you have the option to display each object in a random color. This can be really useful if you have a big scene with a lot of objects. For tip number 6, I show you the fastest way to model a wine glass in Blender. Add in a Bezier curve and in edit mode delete both vertices. Then go into front view and use the draw tool to draw the outline of the wine glass. Then exit edit mode and simply add a screw modifier. Increase the resolution and that's it. If you have a color ramp and want to use the full color spectrum, switch the mode to HSV and change the interpolation mode to FAR. Then increase the saturation and value to 1 on both tops. This is how you get the full hue spectrum. Did you know that you can add textures to spotlights? For this simply click this use notes button and add in any texture you want. Plug it into the color input and also add a texture coordinates node and use the normal output for the vector. Then increase the strength and bring the radius down to zero to make the result more sharp. You can also add colors with a color ramp node. Are you sick of always making the same changes when you open up a new Blender scene? Simply go to File, Defaults and save the current settings as your startup file. When you now open up a new scene, everything is ready to go. 
use the shortcut Shift Alt S in edit mode to turn anything into a sphere. The shortcut Ctrl and Dot allows you to transform the origin. Use the same shortcut again to exit. If you want to create Blender tutorials, download this free Screencast Keys add-on from GitHub. This allows you to display all the shortcuts you use. Did you know that there is an option to add random transformations? In Blender, it is possible to drag and drop materials onto objects. Another cool feature is the possibility to drag and drop reference images directly into the 3D viewport. Use the shortcut Alt-G to reset the location of the selected object. The same also works with Alt-S for the scale and Alt-R for the rotation. To reset the location of the 3D cursor, use the shortcut Shift-C. Here are my favorite websites to get free PBR textures. Texturehaven.com, cc0textures.com and 3dtextures.me. Tip number 19 is about how to add a vignette in the compositor. First, add in an ellipse mask and scale it up until it covers everything except the corners. Then search for the blur node, switch it to fast Gaussian and increase the size. Now mix this together with the render. Switch the mix type to multiply and use the factor to control the strength of the vignette. If you download Blender from Steam or the Microsoft Market, you'll get automatic updates for the stable versions. To mirror an object, you can simply use the shortcut Ctrl M followed by the mirror axis, for example X or Y. The same shortcut also applies for mirroring the camera. Ctrl M and X. If you need to see only a certain part of your scene, you can use the bisect tool with the shortcut Alt B. Simply press Alt B again to reset. Here is how to add a custom bevel to a curve. Go into the curve settings and on the geometry give it some depth. Then change the bevel type to Profile, increase the bevel resolution and customize the curve. Use the shortcut Shift R to repeat the last action. In the color management options you can adjust the exposure and add different looks to your render. Whenever you have a drop down menu like this, you can hover over it, hold down control and use the mouse wheel to scroll through the options. Colors.adobe.com is a very intuitive tool to create color palettes for your projects. Whenever you come across an option in Blender and you don't know what it does, simply right click on it, 
to open up the online manual on the corresponding topic. The Blender GIS is one of my favorite Blender add-ons. It is free and allows you to import real-world terrains. In Blender you should now find this GIS menu up here. On the web geodata choose base map. Press G to open up the search menu. I am looking for the Mount Everest. Then increase the zoom level and press OK. Now you can use the mouse wheel to navigate around. When you are happy, simply press E to project it on a plane. Now to get the height data, again go to the GIS menu and under Web Geodata choose Get Elevation. And here it is. The Save Copy option is very useful to create backups when working on your important projects. If you still lose your scene, you can sometimes get it back with this Recover Last Session option. You can quickly isolate an object by selecting it and pressing backslash on your numpad. Press the same key again to reset. In this tip I'm going to show you how to give each object with this material a random color. First add in a color ramp node. Plug it into the base color and add a gradient. Then search for the object info node and use the random output for the factor. Now each object gets its random color. For the next few tips I want to show you my favorite pre-installed add-ons. The first one is the ANT landscape. Make sure to tick this little checkbox to enable it. When you have done so, you can go to the Add menu and under Mesh you should find this Landscape option. This brings in this displaced plane with all those customizable settings. You also get lots of landscape presets. The next add-on is the sapling tree generator. You find this one in the add menu under curves. This generates a fully customizable tree. You also have a lot of great presets for this one. And you can quickly add an armature and wind animation to those generated trees. Another awesome pre-installed add-on is Blender Kit. This allows you to browse their material and model library directly in the Blender interface. You can then drag and drop the assets you like into the scene. The last two pre-installed add-ons I want to show you are the extra objects for the curve and the mesh. They give you a few more objects to choose from when adding in a mesh or a curve object. I created a list containing more than 70 websites that offer free resources for 3D artists. You can download the PDF from blenderdaily.xyz slash free. Use the shortcut Ctrl Alt Q to switch to this quad view. Use the same shortcut again to get back. T 
Tip number 40. I have this scene with all those star objects. Unfortunately, in the outliner they are all called cube. Manually renaming them would take way too much time. But did you know that there is a batch rename function in Blender? Simply hover over the outliner and press Ctrl F2. Change this to all, find cube and replace it with star. Then press OK and all objects are correctly named. When I work with reference images in Blender, I usually go into the image settings and turn off perspective. This way I only see them when I am in an orthographic view. I also turn on transparency to make the grid visible. And another great thing to do is to turn off the selectability so that you don't accidentally move them while modeling. You probably know the shortcut Ctrl B to add a bevel. But did you know that you can press Ctrl Shift B to bevel the vertices? Whenever you have a file browser in Blender, you can simply enter double slash in the file path to quickly get to the folder where the current file is saved. Also, you can hold down Alt and click on any file path to quickly open it up in your default file browser. If you have a bunch of unconnected nodes, simply select them all and press F to connect. When you have an animated object, you can go into the object properties and under motion path click calculate to visualize the animation. In case you don't like the look of Blender, you can simply go to edit, preferences and under themes choose another interface. For the last tip, I want to shout out my social media channels. I am on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter where I share new tips like the ones in this video every single day. That's it for this video. Leave a comment if you have any other cool tips that you would like to share with us. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.